went back, grounded myself, you know, to a better mental state. And I remembered like, I want to do this for him, for my father. It's deeper than me. So that is what kept me going. Does that make sense? Hi, and welcome back to yet another episode of the Thrive State Podcast. I want to thank you all for, you know, being loyal listeners to the podcast. And if you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please subscribe to the podcast. This is a place where we go very authentic. I bring in guests to really elevate our lives, both in our in the health space, in our heart space, in our mind space. Uh, this is what the Thrive State Podcast is all about. For all you listeners who have gotten a lot of value from the podcast, uh, please consider leaving us a five-star review at ratethispodcast.com slash Thrive State. And just like any week today, I also have a awesome guest for you. I recently met him in a health retreat over in Kauai, where there were people at the top of their fields, including himself. You know, we had thought leaders in the business space, in the health space, in the martial arts space, all working together. And I've met this beautiful soul here. His name is Wasim Hajiri. And Wasim is from Jordan. He's come over to America initially as an engineer and then becomes a world champion bodybuilder. And then from a world champion bodybuilder, he now coaches people how to find themselves, their purpose, their alignment, their fulfillment, and how to find the right job for them. And isn't that important to be aligned with who you are? I think it's so important to be aligned in your relationships, in the work that you do, in your health, because when you're aligned, that's when you are fully embodying who you're meant to be in the world. You know, outside of that, if you're not aligned with the gender that you feel you should be, the relationship you should be in, or the job that you're in, that actually puts you in the stress state. And what happens in the stress state, cortisol goes up, inflammation goes up, your immune system goes down. That puts you in states of chronic symptoms and chronic disease, which is why it's so important to understand how important living with purpose is, how important living with fulfillment is. And fulfillment isn't a science. It's more of an art. And today you're going to discover this art with my friend Wasim, also known as Wasim the Dream. He is actually the definition of being relentless. He's defied all the odds. He journeyed from a country in the Middle East called Jordan with an engineering degree. And he actually graduated with an MBA from the prestigious Rady School of Business at UCSD. That's actually my undergrad and medical school alma mater. And after graduation for him, he actually pursued a job at Qualcomm, which was his dream job. That journey wasn't easy, but he finally met victory after going through 55 recruiters, 20 receptionists, and 25 different job interviews. He understands how to go for what he wants. And his determination also manifests through his hobbies and passion. After quitting fast food and embracing his joy of broccoli, he whittled his body fat down into a minuscule 5% to win three gold medals and a world-class ranking in fitness. He's also a boxer competing in the USA. Wasim is currently an executive career coach who helps professionals land their dream job in record time with excellent salaries. He's also a two-time number one best-selling author with numerous TV, radio, magazine appearances, including Forbes, Fox, CBS, ABC, and iHeartRadio. Wasim is part of the Forbes Career Coaches Council and publishes articles covering career, health, personal development, and let me tell you, he is all heart, he is all soul. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy this conversation I have with Wasim Hajiri. Ladies and gentlemen, Wasim Hajiri, welcome to the Thrive State Podcast, brother. Dr. V, thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. You know, I, I like to talk about how I get some of these guests on, and I just got to spend an amazing five days with Wasim, who's also known as Wasim the Dream in, <laughs> in Kauai. Uh, as you know, I get trained by, you know, one of the best fitness experts in the industry, Eric, the trainer Fleischman, and he held this retreat in, in Kauai, bringing together celebrities and, you know, thought leaders from all around the world, including Billy Blanks and this man sitting in right here was seen <laughs> the dream. So welcome. It was it was so fun to be spending a few days with you. 
Thank you so much. It's it was such a pleasure to meet amazing people as yourself. And then, like you mentioned, everyone else. It was such good vibes. Everyone has such a beautiful energy. Very inspiring. We heard all of the stories. Your speech, you know, your your immigrant story. It's amazing on the ship and everything you shared with us. It was just really inspiring. I think you also came back with a fire. Did you feel that fire? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely lit. I, I wasn't yeah. sure if it was it was the food I ate, but no. It, it was <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Well, you know, we start off this show with a game called The Five to Thrive, and people have gotten a lot of healthy dinners out of me when they win. Uh, right. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure on because my time is precious and I don't get to have dinner out with too many people. So, But if you do win The Five to Thrive, a healthy dinner is going to be on me. So I ask you, with Theme the Dream, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's rock and roll. Let's do this. Here we go. Question number one, worth a thousand points. What was your childhood dream? My childhood dream was to be a sports star, a basketball star like Kobe Bryant and a veterinarian because I love, love, love animals. And I wanted to help uh, save animals and have a positive impact in the world for animals. Ah, great. Okay, you get a thousand points there. Question number two. <laughs> question number two is we can hear that you don't have an American accent. Where are you from and when did you learn English? So I am originally from Amman, Jordan, and on the map it is right next to Turkey, Syria, Israel. For the people who are not very familiar, it's very, very far away. It's a 20-hour plane ride. <laughs> and I grew up, fortunately, both of my parents were very smart in putting me in schools that taught English. Everything is in English. We read books, all of that. And then I learned from TV and shows and movies more than anything. I was always watching them in English and with, you know, with subtitles. And that's how I caught on even faster school, thanks to my parents. And then TV, which teaches you a lot when you put the subtitle. <laughs> oh, very good. 2000 points. You know, that's a really, really great thing. I'm going to make sure I, I do a lot of uh, movies with subtitles with my daughter as well. Question number three. Question number three is what was the biggest challenge going from Jordan to the United States? It was a major culture shock. It's mm. like you can say that there are two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Moving out here, the English was no problem. But as an example, making friends. Mm. That was one of the first challenges that I faced because in Jordan, it's a small country, so it's very community based. Mm -hmm. So everywhere you go, you know, people open up their doors. Welcome, come in, have some tea, have some coffee. You make friends like that. People are busy with their lives. It takes a while to make some solid, solid friends. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, the first challenge that I faced. So how can I make a close group of friends, which takes time? You need to, you know, I needed to learn the culture, how the whole style is. And that would be the first one that I, that I faced. Okay, sounds good. Here we go. Question number four yeah. is... How did you get into bodybuilding and what was the process of becoming a champion? What did you win exactly in bodybuilding? So I won the Team USA Nationals. Then I qualified to the, the Olympia, the Natural Olympia. And then I won there. That was my biggest one. Competed in a lot of smaller competitions, but my two biggest ones are there. And then in the World Championships, I top, placed top five and fourth overall. So the journey to, to becoming a bodybuilder. So I let's go back, backtrack a little bit. I always loved Arnold Schwarzenegger, the classic, you know, I love the Terminator, his movies, but also how he built his life started with bodybuilding. And that opened up the doors, you know, to acting, to Hollywood, to the, the different things that he did. So it's funny, <laughs> my story it's a little bit similar in that sense because the bodybuilding opened up a lot of doors for me. I didn't even know that it was going to open up these doors. Mm -hmm. um, as an example, after I won the Team USA Nationals, I got in touch with Fox News and I told them, hey, I won this uh, medal, but I just want to share my story with the world so that people can get inspired. And just I wanted to show them that, you know, you're an immigrant, you're from another country or whatever the case may be, that it can be done. So it opened up more doors as well. And then how I got into it, it's actually very, very random. 
2015, I always had thoughts about competing, but never really took action. You know, in Jordan, there's not as many opportunities. So when I moved out here, it's a whole big world here, you know, so many different avenues and competitions. I was working a job and then my manager asked, he told me like, you look like you're in good shape. Why don't you join a, a bodybuilding competition? I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I've been thinking about that for a long time, but how is the process? What should I do? So he introduced me to a coach who is really well known here in San Diego for training bodybuilders. And that's how the whole journey started. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, you know, just like I was sharing, you remember the story, my first competition, I got last place. It was a complete failure, <laughs> but I learned from it and slowly grew so that, you know, you need to hone down the training, the diet, and then slowly but surely, you know, worked my way up to those, those other bigger ones. That's amazing. And I want to dive in, into that a little deeper. My mistake for asking such a long-winded question, but last question on the five to thrive is, yes, with seeing the dream, how would you like to be remembered? I would like to leave the earth, leave this world a little bit better than when I, you know, first started my journey here. So just having a positive impact on the people that I get in touch with. That's literally my mission and my purpose. I love people and I know there's so much going on in the world. You know, there's pain, there's suffering. And I would like to help with that, shed a positive light and help whoever you know, whoever I get in touch with and hopefully make, you know, the world a little bit more positive. That would be how I'd, li I'd like to be remembered. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So much to kind of go Thank over you. today because I feel like so much you have to offer when people could understand how to take the steps that are aligned with who they are. Not only yes. will they reach better success, better fulfillment, but also better health and longevity because you'll actually activate those the biology of longevity when you can become fully aligned with who you are, which is why I want you to hold up a copy of your book right now. You'll see the, the beautiful picture of you. You got to pull it up a little bit higher. It is there a number one bestseller. It's called Fulfilled, How to Land a Job that Aligns with Your Purpose. How beautiful <laughs> is that? You know, I feel like the, the pandemic, you know, as difficult as it is for so many people, was also a time for people to pause, for people to say, oh, wow, what's happening in my life right now that I'm not enjoying? And how can I be more inspired? How can I be more aligned with what I want to be doing in the world? So I feel like people have really used this time for a lot of introspection. And I know you were telling me before in terms of job satisfaction, people out there who are in the workforce don't seem to be very happy with their jobs. Is that right? So if you look at the U.S. labor statistics, yeah. 70, roughly 70 percent of professionals are unhappy with their jobs, which is crazy. That's seven out of 10 people. And then the great resignation recently in January 2022, four and a half million people quit their jobs within a month, which is crazy. So just like you said, a lot of shifts are happening. People are more waking up to the fact like, wow, I need to be more fulfilled. I need to be happy, you know, in my job, not just about pay. So believe it or not, pay is important. But the number one thing is the culture of the company, the type of team they're working with, the type of projects they're working on, having a nice manager, you know, being treated equally with respect, feeling like people are heard. That's what most everyone wants. They just want a voice and want to feel that love and respect, you know, uh, in what they're doing. That is definitely uh, something that, you know, I know a lot of people feel burnt out and stressed out about. And, and look, if you're feeling burnt out, when you're feeling stressed out, guess what happens to your physiology? It drives up the stress hormone. Cortisol goes up. It also brings up inflammation in your body. It lowers your immune system. That gets you prone to getting chronic symptoms and chronic disease. So really, really bad stuff. So if you hate your job, you know, it's time to reflect on it, see how, how to change it. But let me ask you one thing. You know, you use the word alignment. And you also use the word purpose. Let's tackle both of those things separately. Why do you think people take on jobs that you know are not fully aligned? And how do you become a little bit more aligned to doing the thing you were meant to do? That's a great question. So initially, I think people 
focus on money, right? Because there's bills to pay. Everyone has bills. And then they're like, okay, I need a job to pay the bills, which is great. But the problem is when you take a job initially, you know, most people right out of college, okay, first job that I get. And most people get stuck in that job forever for a long, long time, 20 years. And they're like, wow, I'm miserable. But now, nowadays, especially with technology and everything that's going on, you will have options. You know, now you don't even need a college degree and you can land some jobs by taking a six month course. As an example, cybersecurity, right? It's just a small example. You can now take a six month course and land a job that pays at least $60,000 without without it even without a degree uh, one of my friends has a company who they specify in that the second part of your question okay so how do you find alignment in, in the, this next job that you would like to transition to let's say right now everyone who's listening you are in a job and you want to move into something more fulfilling First of all sit down and ask yourself what is important to me what are my own values is it more about family? So I want to spend more time with my family. Is it more about, I like to make an impact, let's say environmentally, as an example, you care about the environment, you want to make a difference there. So you start to look at companies who are environmentally conscious, and they, they are making a difference there. So that resonates with you. Let's say you like helping people. What are the types of companies that are helping people in their services and products? So having a general idea of what resonates with you in your heart and then finding a company that is their mission is close to that. Does that make sense, Dr. B? Absolutely. Yeah. So I would say that's the first part of the question. What would the second part be for you? Yeah, I would probably say the following. You bring up uh, one of these things with values. And I think the very last part of your book, you mentioned purpose as well. So understanding what that is and then aligning, you know, aligning what you do with that. So, you know, I talk about purpose as it pertains to health because it, there's been several studies that are out there that demonstrate that people with a sense of purpose actually live longer. It preserves your telomeres. People live with a sense of purpose lives actually on average seven years longer. If you spend any time in the hospital, if you got a sense of purpose, you're actually out of the hospital sooner. So you, you heal faster. Yeah, people with a sense of a purpose also get less disease like cardiovascular disease and stroke. So purpose is super important, you know, on the physiological level. And so I've asked different people, how do people really align or know what their purpose is? And, and you get different answers. So I wonder for yourself, you know, finding a job that aligns with your purpose, how do you suppose or, or how do you define purpose and how do people find that for themselves? Okay, so I will give you an example about myself and how I found my own purpose. And then I'll use uh, some other examples. When I started out, I was in engineering. That was my career. I did undergrad, electrical engineering, got into the field. I was working day and night. I was happy. I thought that I was happy. So slowly after the years went by, I'm like, I don't think I'm getting, you know, the juice from this job. As much as I love technology, but I love people more than anything. So how can I transition into something that more that I can work with people? So as I was in still working engineering, I started my MBA program back in 2015 here in UCSD in, in San Diego, started to learn about business, everything about business because of my tech background. Okay, so how can I, you know, first I want to learn about business and then how can I move into a business that helps people. So that's something that I can help people and work with them one-on-one -on -one and serve them. So slowly I started to build a dream job program, which is, I looked at myself, I'm like, okay, I was an engineer. I struggled in finding a job, but how can I help engineers find a job faster and easier? That's where the idea came. Mm. And that, that is my whole company right now, right? It started out at that idea. And then I slowly transitioned from engineering into career coaching because the purpose is aligned with what I love, which is helping people, working with them actually one-on-one -on -one, in groups, speaking engagements, et cetera. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's my story. Now, the people that I work with, as an example, and this happens all the time. I talk to a developer who has 20, 25 years of experience. And I'm like, 
I asked them, do you actually like coding? Some say yes, some say no. So for the people that say no, I'm like, what do you actually like? What is exciting for you? Let's go back to the childhood, even go back to the childhood, the things you used to enjoy. Mm. So one of the guys I talked to, he's like, I love real estate. Ever since he was a kid, he would ride with his dad, go see houses. He always loved real estate, the whole concept of buying houses and selling. So guess what, Dr. V? He ditched his whole career and moved into real estate. Now that took time, obviously. You know, we helped him do that over a year. It was not a fast transition, but until he got the license and et cetera. So I would tell the listeners right now, think about, go back to your childhood. Mm. What was exciting for you, right? What is something that really, as an example for you, Dr. V, why did you get into medicine? This episode of the Thrive State Podcast is brought to you by the Thrive State Accelerator. The Thrive State Accelerator is actually a home course that I developed using the exact same techniques I work with my celebrity clients, CEOs, and executives on how to get them to the Thrive State. The Thrive State Accelerator teaches you how to master your seven bioenergetic elements. That's sleep, nutrition, movement, stress and emotional mastery, relationships, our thoughts and mindset, as well as purpose. In this Thrive State Accelerator, you're also going to get a bonus module on optimization. That's how I talk about supplementation, peptides, all the optimization techniques I use with my clients to get them to the Thrive State. Now, for some of you who are just joining us for the first time, you guys might be wondering, what is the Thrive State? Well, the Thrive State is actually the energy the epigenetic environment we give to ourselves, telling ourselves, telling our DNA how to act and how to respond. And if we want optimal health, longevity, and peak performance, if we can master these seven bioenergetic elements, our ability to have those three things that we just said, optimal health, longevity, and peak performance is at its greatest. And it also prevents you from getting chronic symptoms like brain fog, being overweight, feeling sluggish, acne, pain, all these chronic symptoms, as well as preventing you from getting chronic disease. So getting to that thrive state is really getting to that state to master being that very best version of yourself so you could show up for you, for your family, for your business, everything that's important to you. So go ahead, check it out right now at kianbu.com slash accelerator and use coupon code podcast 25 for 25% off. Now back to the podcast. Because my mom told me to. <laughs> my, okay. mom said, my mom said you could be one of three things, a doctor, an MD, <laughs> or a physician. Uh, okay. So I went into medicine. But so I love where you're going with this because what I'm hearing is the things that light you up. Yes. The things that you can do that light you up that also serve other people and those combination of things. And for many people who we are as human beings, we know as children, the things that bring us joy, the things that light us up. Society, maybe our, our parents or are taught by outside forces of what happiness or success would look like. And we stop saying no to ourselves. And for me, it was stop saying no to maybe a person who wanted to speak a little bit more, who wanted to entertain. And so we forget that part of ourselves. But here, here's the cool part is, you know, when you're developing, you know, even as you go off your path, you're still learning about yourself. And there's, there's always the, it's human nature to kind of rediscover and to remember who you are. And from what I also heard from you is sometimes if you tend to forget, it's, remembering the things that just start to bring you joy to start to light you up and like, Oh my God, I would do this. I would do this. If, even if you didn't pay me. Right. And then as you do those type of things and serve other people, that purpose piece always seems to come together. Absolutely. And I love another thing that you said, and I totally resonate. My culture is very similar. So I grew up, it's engineer, doctor, lawyer. Hence, I became an engineer. I don't want to be a doctor. I didn't want to be a lawyer. I was like, okay, engineer. I didn't even know what I liked. So, you know, so I right. think most people are also similar to you and I are pushed into these careers because, oh, they look good on paper or they make money or, but in the end, you remember what I told you initially? I love your question. What did you want to be as a kid? Two things, right? Basketball star yep. and a veterinarian because I love animals. What's funny is right now I'm doing not the same thing, but the sports got into bodybuilding and boxing. 
And instead of a veterinarian, as much as I love animals, I love humans more and people. So I'm putting that care into people, into humans. Isn't that funny? Like it all goes back to the childhood. It can be a different version of it, but the layer beneath it is just exactly what you said. So it's service, right? Serving people, serving animals, serving people, but it, it's, it's the underlying factor of serving someone or something that is greater and bigger than ourselves. That's so beautiful. And it seems like for many people, you know, finding that purpose is less of a discovery process, but more of a remembering process, right? Yes. Remembering who you are. You know, I look at my 15-year-old daughter right now who's who's bubbling up. She's she's just really super happy. I know that you know, within us, joy and happiness is our natural state. And somewhere along the way, some people, some people forget that. And to remember those things is really the natural state. And your purpose is really, I tell people, your purpose is you. And your purpose is just to serve you. Absolutely. And yeah, so finding the purpose, literally, I start with, I even have examples in the book in the first chapter, so that people can actually have, you know, guidelines. So I have as an example, a series of questions to, to get your mind to think, like you said, just getting to the roots of what you like, who you are, mm. without the parents, society, the friends, TV, social media, what looks cool, all of that. So it will help everyone, you know, slowly understand, oh, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. <laughs> and then getting an idea of what that purpose is and then finding a company that, that is related to your purpose. That's beautiful. You know, you do something, you know, very similar to what I do, or I, it might be completely different, but you have a morning routine, a, a way to kind of set up your day. I'm very curious as to what yours is. Well, first of all, why do you have a morning routine? The morning routine absolutely is the most important thing in the world. And you know this out of anyone, you know, like, and even all of these amazing people that we met on the, in the retreat, world renowned mixed martial artists, the best of the best, Billy Blanks, you know, the Hollywood actors, all of them. And I asked them that same question. Do you have a morning routine? They all said yes every single one of them you also go out and study the most successful people in the world in any profession you know tony robbins bill gates oprah winfrey they all have a morning routine so it's you know everyone does it now why do i personally do it this is why and you know this more than anyone on average, we get 60,000 thoughts per day, right? Roughly between 60 to 70,000. Now that's a lot. Outside influence is social media, other people. We have so much going on from the outside world. So how can we control that? It's by the, the morning routine. So all I do is I block out the first hour. I don't touch my phone. I don't open up the TV, nothing, emails, none of that. And I feed my mind something positive. I put myself in a good state so that I can, that carries on for the whole day. And you know this also, they did a lot of studies about the first 30 minutes when you wake up, almost set the tone for the whole day, right? There's a lot of also studies that they did on that. So I wake up, I do meditation, number one, journaling. So I put my thoughts on paper, plan out the day. The meditation includes breathing, gratitude. Now I'm getting into the tapping meditations, mm -hmm. which, which are great. And then exercise, physical exercise, a thousand percent. And while I'm exercising, I put on something positive. So that I'm feeding my mind as the body is moving, you know, the brain is receptive. And that's my morning routine, exercise, journaling, and meditation. Oh, that is beautiful. You know, I think everybody has, has a combination that's probably very, very similar. And I find the morning routine, you know, super invaluable because things are going to happen during the day and they're going to throw you off. It's not if stress will come, stress will come and it could either derail you. But if you have a solid morning routine, it could put you basically in the driver's seat of your day instead of being in the passenger seat, controlling how the things around you are happening and responding to things rather than reacting to things. That's why the morning routine for me is so powerful as well. Absolutely. And what is your morning routine? Oh, yeah. Very simple. I get up in, in the morning. I make sure I hydrate because we lose a lot of, of food at night. So I drink 
you know, probably 16 ounces of water with a little of Himalayan sea salt and some lemon in it. I also write in my journal, make sure all my intentions are there for the day. What are the important tasks for the day? And then I also do a little bit of very mild breathing. You know, I don't meditate well just on its own. So I do a very, very active breathing process that puts me in a parasympathetic state. And then wow. I'm in a car listening to a podcast on the way to Eric, the trainer's gym. And then I get my <laughs> morning workout in. And after that workout, I'm feeling like nothing could stop me. Absolutely. So you see, we're so similar. And most people do something very similar, some kind of meditation or prayer or breathing. And then journaling, like you said, and then exercise, oh, physical exercise, as you know, you know, it's extremely important. Even if it's 10, 15 minutes in the morning, you have no time. I recommend like to my clients, uh, even some of the clients that have, let's say some, you know, health challenges or knees or something like that. But I even just walking around or doing something small will go a long way in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I want to get you know into a few additional topics only because you had brought this up earlier. And I find so many people can probably hear your process through this. I mean, you mentioned, you know, the very first bodybuilding competition you had, you were up there, there were basically 13 people flexing, showing off, you felt like <laughs> you were getting there. And 13 people there and they they called up basically the very you know the 13th place the last place and your name gets called up first so you get very last in this thing that you want to do <laughs> how do you go what is the mindset what is what's going through your mind at that point to say forget this this is not for me i don't want to go on and do this to actually becoming you know a world champion becoming a mr olympia what's going through your mind and how do you how do you get yourself from going from last last place to first place i love that question so i learned over the years that i even analyzed myself going back what is going to keep you going is the purpose behind it right why are you doing it whatever it is our listeners out there remember why you're doing that specific thing right if the purpose is powerful enough that's what's going to get you up and keep you going so for me especially at that time a few weeks before that first competition is when my father passed away and as much as that experience was painful when i lost i remembered my father and now i wanted to keep going for him for you know that is what got me back up slowly but surely even though i don't have to lie to you at that time i was in my head this is not for me i had all the doubts all the negativity it hit me like a train but then again went back grounded myself you know to a better mental state and i remembered like i want to do this for him for my father it's deeper than me so that is what kept me going. Does that make sense? I think the biggest thing was the reason behind it and slowly got me back up. Oh, that's beautiful is, you know, knowing your why is one of those things. And there's got to be a little bit of kindness to yourself, you know, also, I mean, you know, I, I deal with a lot of, you know, uh, CEOs and actors who want to, you know, become the very best version of themselves. A lot of people want to lose some weight or look a little bit better. And, you know, some people, when they slip up, tend to be pretty hard on themselves. Like, you know, when they lost it and ate, ate that piece of cake or didn't go work out or whatever it may be. But I always remind them that whatever success you want is basically a, the result of habits that you have in that particular area. You want to have a great body and, and be healthy, you got to have healthy habits. You want to have great finances, you got to have good financial habits. So all boils down to that. And their current state of health is probably from habits that are probably not the healthiest thing to do. But breaking habits and starting new ones could be a messy process. And there probably needs to be a little bit of kindness for yourself for not beating yourself up, for not you know sticking to, through that. Do you find that as you're going through things, if you're not fully committed or, or slip up every now and then, what is your process to allow yourself some grace? Absolutely. And I love, love what you said. So self-love is huge. And unfortunately, they don't teach us. No one teaches us how to love ourselves. Something small that I do in the journaling, as cheesy as it sounds, I write down, what are three things that I love about myself? 
a small dose of self-love. Initially, start building self-love about everything, you know, because it's all an inside journey. So this is before you do literally anything. Let's say you want to lose some weight. You need to right now, let's say you're even whatever, you know, you're 500 pounds. You need to love yourself at 500 pounds and at 150 pounds. Because, you know, when you get to 150, you're still going to be down in yourself. Oh, my God, I need to be 140, 130, 120. It's never going to end. I learned this the hard way in my bodybuilding journey. If I'm not shredded to the bone and I'm like, you know, I used to be, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't like what I'm looking at in the mirror. So I went back and I was like, I'm going to learn to love myself no matter what. And it can start with morning affirmations. I love how I look. I love, you know, my heart. I love my soul. So every day, if you feed yourself something, you know, giving yourself that own self dose and then slowly maybe hiring a coach, hiring a coach, you know, let's say a life coach, someone that will look at you and you're like, don't you see how amazing you are slowly building that self-love and self-confidence in your own skin right now that is the first first step i think you nailed it right there it's really you know if people go off track with what they want to be in terms of like you know their eating habit or a goal and they happen to go off track how do you get people not to beat themselves up and i and i believe you know, having that self-love is super, super important. And, you know, with the addition to the affirmations you just talked about, are there any additional tricks or tools you have in your pocket in terms of cultivating self-love? Because that's not something that the world teaches us. You know, people kind of go through life and they look through social media and, and they judge themselves through a lens of comparison. They see other people and they don't see themselves. And I know that's been a journey, you know, for me and, and particularly men. Men don't necessarily know, you know, to, you know, to kind of give themselves self-care and self-love. It's not masculine. I mean, some people, you know, take it too far and they'll, they'll go through, you know, the masculine toxic sick masculinity ego but they're not really really loving themselves so you got any tricks or tools for that absolutely so tricks let's go back to tricks to let's say uh to increase the self-love aspect part of my program this is again it's funny you mentioned this when i'm working with my clients one-on-one -on -one, i have them write a couple of things number one all of your accomplishments what are all of the things you're proud of not just you know things you earned or awards or accolades no 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 even simpler i was a good friend i am a good son i am a good daughter i am this i am that work your way from the small things to the bigger ones second part you need to write this yourself right what do you love about yourself not just looks wise maybe it's your hair you know it looks not just looks hair maybe it's your personality maybe it's your empathy the smallest things what do you appreciate about yourself from the inside after i so they write down the accomplishments they write down what they love about themselves they write down what are some memories that you're proud of like someone told you thank you reminding yourself of when you were a good person let's say with your mother with your father writing them down boosts your own self like wow you know as much as i think that I, I, let's say you know i don't have that six pack but i was at least a good friend or a good brother or a good sister or a good whatever so i have them write these things down initially and then to figure out, you, the, you mentioned that don't be too hard on yourself. Celebrating the small, small, small wins, okay? So if you want to exercise, as an example, start small, five minutes. And then when you do the five minutes, celebrate it to yourself. Say, yes, give yourself a tap on your own shoulder. That is, you know, that boosts you up. And the next day, go to six minutes seven minutes eight minutes slowly small steps and consistency and then celebrating those small wins don't wait for the big ones on a daily basis really helps get traction with weight loss with anything else does that make sense absolutely it sounds like you know really 
one, not necessarily going big in terms of results, always a little tiny progress. And it's con- the consistency over time will build up those habits. And by the time you know it, you're looking like Dr. V. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, by the time you know it, you're going to become the very best version of yourself. And we could all use uh, some of that. But uh, well, seem you've given us so much value today. I just want to thank you for being on the podcast. How do people find you? Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And for all of the listeners out there, thank you for being with us today. And hopefully you can share what you learned with your friends, you know, so that they can uh, apply it to their own lives. Um, How people can reach me, all social media at Wasim the Dream. The dream is double M at the end. And my website is getyourdreamjob.net. That is, and all of the information is right there. I highly recommend you guys follow this guy. His energy is infectious. His smile <laughs> is, you know, his smile makes a grown man blush as well. <laughs> and, and the last question I have for you, my brother, is with everything you've, you've been through in life, with everything that you teach, what has been your best medicine? <sighs> Feeding the soul. Feeding your soul on a daily basis. So... Not, not even, you know, doesn't even have to do with religion. It can be, right? A lot, some people are religious, some people are not. But feeding the soul, which is helping others, which is doing small acts of kindness on a daily basis. Small acts, even if it's opening the door for someone, uh, giving away $2 to a homeless person. Feeding the soul on a daily basis, I believe, is the most important thing because it's all an inside job. You feed your soul, you take care of your soul, your heart, the rest will follow. That's beautiful, brother. Thank you again. We've seen the dream, everybody, for being on the Thrive State Podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. V. It's a pleasure to be here. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Thrive State Podcast. And if this podcast is bringing a lot of value to you, if you're find that your life is just improving with this podcast, that your life is getting to the next level, please consider supporting it. And here's a few ways you can do so. You can do so by liking this video and commenting on this video and also sharing this video with your friends and family. Another thing you can do is go to ratethispodcast.com slash Thrive State. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review there. It will really, really help this show grow. And it This will give me more time so that I could actually give more content to you just like you got in this episode. And if you haven't already picked up a copy of my book, Thrive State, Your Blueprint for Optimal Health, Longevity, and Peak Performance, you can pick it up now. It became a number one new release in longevity. Go to thrivestatebook.com. And if you enjoy the book, please consider leaving us a review as well. And the last thing you can do if you're liking everything here and you want to work uh, more closely with me as well as my team to get you into the Thrive State, go to kianvu.com slash accelerator and consider joining the home course, the Thrive State Accelerator. It's really the course that I use. It's the concepts that I use personally when I work with CEOs celebrities and my high profile clients to get them to the Thrive State. Again, the Thrive State Accelerator at kienvu.com slash accelerator. And because you're a listener of this podcast, I want you to save 25% by using the coupon code podcast25. I hope we continue to give value to you. And remember always, you are your best medicine. 